All right, what's going on guys? Long time no see. As you can see, E46 is on stands right now. And yep, that's because I'm pulling the engine today. A bunch of oil. Um, I did the rear main seal after I did the clutch. Didn't take a video on that because I just wanted to get it done. But I do definitely need to start making more videos. So this is a perfect time to make one. But it was leaking a lot of oil. I wanna do the rod bearings too because not really sure when they were done. So gonna pull the engine, clean up the whole thing, redo some gaskets, maybe timing chain um, tensioner and just all the other stuff, like little S54 things that go bad. Just gonna tidy everything up because this thing does have 174,000 miles now. So it definitely needs a little refresh, rebuild. See, so yeah, let's get right into it. So first things first, going to loosen my battery terminal because no one wants the battery plugged in when you're dealing with electronics especially pulling an engine so now she's got no power to her and should be ready to start tearing apart the harness i'm going to start with this right here work my way into here and yank this little bitty out going to go with the method of pulling the whole front end and then hoisting the engine out. Got to drain the Freont, my AC system, which is going to kind of suck, but got to do what you got to do. Okay, got a lot of the stuff off from the engine bay. Got the intake box, the valve cover cover. Going to start tackling the wiring now. Um, very easy, actually. Took about 10 minutes. I've done this a lot, so got everything tossed on the E36 but going pretty smoothly so far. Hopefully it just goes smoothly, take it out, put it back in, no issues, but you know, car shit, it's car shit. So there's gonna be an issue somewhere, but hopefully it's not too bad. But look at how beautiful these ITBs look like. Clean. The engine itself is pretty clean, but needs to be taken out to be refreshed. It'll just make me feel better. And I went away to college, so I need a car that's gonna be reliable. So I don't want the rod bearings going and then me having to get a new crank or engine. So might as well just get everything done while I have the time to. Okay, taking the starter off, or the wires for the starter. Um, fuck, okay. Got a little washer right here. This guy goes on first, or sorry, last. And then this guy goes on first. Now he's connected. And then there's that little black wire that goes to that bottom area. Green goes top, yellow go bottom. Yeah. So it's the next day. Didn't really have a lot of time yesterday to get everything ready to get pulled out because I had to go and get this engine hoist. But honestly, didn't take too long to get the whole front end off and get all the wiring situated. So yeah, now it's about ready to be pulled out. I'm gonna put the chain on it and then unloosen the motor mounts and then try and pull her out. Everything's disconnected, so hopefully it just comes out and there's nothing I forgot. All right, what's up guys? Sorry, I did not record really any of that. I'm just kind of by myself, so, and I'm on a time frame. So, engine is out. Um, I will explain a little bit how I did it. So pretty much had to end up dropping the front, uh, front subframe a little bit. There's four 18 millimeters and then a Torx bit E10 that goes to the steering shaft. And it just kind of drops a little bit lower. Leave everything else connected, like your uh, calipers and everything. You don't have to drop everything. But it made it way easier to pull this engine out. Didn't have to remove the headers or anything and left the trans on there. So now this is just chilling out here. As you can see, I really do need to clean this up, this engine bay. So I'm gonna probably pressure wash it all. Kind of messed this up a little bit, but I'm gonna get rid of this anyway. Second air pump's gonna get deleted anyway, so not a huge deal. I disconnected the lollipop mounts, two 16s on each side. And yeah, I'm probably gonna pull all this crap off and gold heat tape everything i don't know yet kind of thinking about it because it's 
old and brittle and gross and just tearing up everywhere. So yeah, let's get to, I'm gonna start pressure washing this thing. Sorry, I didn't really document me pulling it, but I will document all the rest of me working on the engine. This is just a pain by myself trying to get this out. S54 is a little bit bigger than something like an M50 or M52. Uh, that's way easier and less complicated to pull out, but honestly, it came out pretty easy. Um, as long as I, well, if I were to do it again, it would be way easier because I would know to drop the subframe. I was kind of messing with it, trying to get it out with the subframe all bolted in and did not work. So yeah, let's get to cleaning this thing. All right, so I pulled off the engine harness. Gonna strip all that, been stripping it all of the old wire loom and re -loom it up, re just clean it up for sure. I'm cleaning up my headlight wiring because one of my tires popped on this side and it started yanking some wires. So I'm gonna clean up, honestly, the entire chassis harness as well. Uh, everything that you can see pretty much. So all that, all this, and all that. Uh, need to pressure wash the car. Probably tomorrow I'm gonna do that. As you can see, pretty much pulled everything off the engine now it's just almost bare i'm gonna leave the throttle bodies on and pretty much all i gotta do is i'm waiting for a buddy to come over we're gonna pull off the clutch and flywheel and then put it on the engine stand and then go over it again to re clean everything up so you see i got the headers off Got the AC compressor off. Pretty much just pulled everything off because I'm gonna just steam clean everything individually. And then just clean up all the engine as much as I can. I want this thing to be pretty clean before I put it all back together and put it back in the car. And then pretty much waiting on parts to come in. I'm gonna do the rod bearings. I'm going to be doing probably the valve cover gasket because this one, I don't know. I don't like the way that looks and gonna go into there anyway. So I'm gonna have to get a new valve cover gasket anyway. And then oil pan gasket, water pump, because mine is very messed up and does not keep my engine cool very well anymore, especially when I'm drifting. Uh, rear main seal gonna be done. It's got a stage one DKM clutch. And then, just a couple other little things like hoses and whatnot. Uh, I'm definitely missing something. Oh, I'm gonna do the Viton O-ring for this right here. As you can see, it's leaking a bunch of oil down there. So I gotta get that done. And, huh, I'm trying to think. What else was I gonna do? Oh, um, I think that's about it. Oh, I gotta get a cam sensor because I messed it up when I was taking it out of the car as you can see it's pretty messed up yeah couldn't really focus that but yeah this thing's gonna be very nice when it's all back together can't wait to pressure wash the engine bay uh, I was just cleaning some heat shields I'm gonna clean up all that stuff and oh I need a new belt didn't know that until now, but this one's seeing some crackage throughout the whole belt. I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably not. Just know it's dry rotted and it's going to break soon, so might as well get a new one of those. But yeah, I gotta also mess with my transmission a little bit because it was leaking some trans fluid and I'm pretty sure it's through this right here, the input shaft seal. So, gonna have to mess with that. Delete my secondary airbox, even though I still have cats, but I don't really care about my old cats. I'm gonna get um, catless headers anyway, so. Yeah, that will not be an issue anymore. Got the engine on the engine stand. Decided to summon Tommy Thomas Muller, because he's a wiring expert now. Yeah, literally. <laughs> this kid eats some cake and do my wiring Literally. and then I'm just cleaning up everything pretty much with some wheel acid about to go blind but yeah it's coming along nicely so 
through further inspection, I kind of knew this was happening because my car would have some overheating issues when I would drift. And this water pump is toast. I don't know if you can hear it, but like there's a lot of side to side play in there. And yeah, it's just, this is honestly just seems like it's the OEM water pump. So decided to freshen that up with this water pump I got from Vimmer World. Apparently it's upgraded, so it has like a little bit more flow, which is cool. And it was actually pretty affordable for a water pump. I think it was like $130, so not bad. And it is a little bit upgraded. So I'm just gonna toss this on there and see what it's like, see how it fits up and if there's any issues with it. All right, so we set the gasket on there that it came with. It's like a paper gasket. And I just put the the bolts back in the thread, so I gotta take those out real quick. All right, so toss this on there. Let's see. in there a little bit. But let's just put these in. these to sequence I also got a uh, Waller I think it opens at 80 degrees Celsius now it's a little bit different from factory but I'm gonna put this in there comes with like a little o-ring that you go right up here And this guy just kind of, see, just go underneath here. Huh. Maybe this has to go on to the water pump first and then put it all on. Okay, so I got the thermostat and the water pump kind of mocked in there. So now I'm gonna start to tighten everything back up. There we go, we are. Hopefully there's no leaks now with uh, these O-rings are a little weird. I'm going to show you up close. So this has like an O-ring that goes into here and so does this right here, this little hose. So hopefully that's not weird because there's little O-rings so who knows if they'll hold up or not. but. Yeah, the engine's looking pretty good so far. It's very stripped, but it's starting to come back together. Put the water pump back on and the thermostat as well. So now it has an engine hook. Still haven't got my rod bearings in the mill yet, so that's kind of annoying, but I did get a new valve cover gasket because I do not like the way that looks and I think it was leaking a little bit of oil. It was just weird in the car, filling some of these in, like these uh, 
the RTV right here, and I don't want to do RTV anymore, uh, only on like certain spots because I don't know. I read some article online and it told me to RTV this whole thing, but I'm not 100% sure if that's really the way to do it. Hey, hey we got the same motor mass as we did for this thing. Yeah, sir. <laughs> I remember how those went. <laughs> yeah, but now it's out of the car, so it's easier. Oh, yeah, true. Thank you, David, for recording for my video. I very appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. You. I hate you. And your car is still... Wait, you have the black No one got an uh, update on your car. I'm sorry. Viewers. Yeah, but I bought, <laughs> I, I bought a 750IL. I bought a 740i Sport that's manual swapped. I also Wait, bought an 8... which one of those run? Huh? <laughs> which one of those run? They all David, run. David, get, get, the, get the goodness of the... I mean, they all run. The, they all like, run, motherfucker. The drama. They, they all the run. The 750's blown its transmission, though. We pulled the nut off of this. My nut. We blown our transmission. And now we're gonna go like this, and I'm very scared because I'm a bitch. Get rid of the, you you should have made the zip tie circle the loop beforehand. What? You should have... Oh, Jesus Christ. What, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought we were tying it to this. I would have connected yeah. all your zip ties to make a big zip tie loop. You want to help me? Gosh, make me put the beer down. Actually, I don't trust it up there. Make More hands. Yeah, you're gonna make the job go you're gonna faster. Pour beer in my engine. That's good for the oil. I mean, I think it would send it after that. Oh, we need more zip ties. Now we're good. Monka. I'm glad my suggestion worked. That's pretty good. Beautiful. No, your suggestion was to zip tie it to the freaking ceiling. Wait, no. The point was to get the. I mean, it'd be better, honestly, well, because this is... to get the fucking the pulley out of there and leave the chain on there? Yeah. <laughs> but I said, screw it, and we'll just oh, leave, okay. we'll just leave blaze, both of them on Nico's there. Nico's blazing his own trail. Yeah. As long as you can clearance that, it should be. Yeah, it's just, not um, for sure, just, and then we'll just three, pull right? it out, That's yeah. Fine. Whatever. They look like... Uh, bless you. T... BMW... 20s. Things. I'm just going to use this. Oh, God, dude, we got to be sure... I'm not a bitch. Stop burping, I have dude. so many sets of Allen wrenches at work, I should just give you, like, a real set. Nah, that's a real set. What are you talking about? Probably every, are real. You, dude, are they is. metric, though? Yes. Oh, see, all the ones I have are standard. Probably stole that from some bicyclist. No. Yeah. yeah. No. That's exactly what that's for. My that's finger that's for Nico. Blur his face. Right? Blur his <laughs> Okay, that's not working. Use no. a hammer. But I don't want to use my mm. torque spits. What do you mean yeah, use your you torque spits? Yeah, no, you don't fucking need, ratchet. No, no, you're supposed. What? You're supposed to have the correct bits for a ratchet. I know, but I don't. Or just an so. Allen wrench. Those are probably torqued to like 28, 25 foot pounds. <sighs> like, what are you looking at? Oh, the oil pump. Okay. I'll hold the. <sighs> nope. Is that the right size? Make yes. sure it's the right 100%, size. Hundred percent. That's the right size. Yeah. Uh, it was fitting in there very snugly. I wish I had this out of my own. We probably should go bring them so that it doesn't strip that. You want me to drive my hoop back home? Oh, we can take my mom's fucking SUV. Can I do a fat hill? Yeah. Okay. I guess. Pause. We'll do a take two. So I decided while my engine's out, I would do the CPV valve O-ring, which is this little guy right here. It's located right here on the block on the exhaust side of a US spec M3. But as you can see, oil could easily seep down through there and it was actually leaking right here. So it was starting to go over here and it could pretty much, a lot of people think that it's a room and seal when it's not and it's just this. So I decided to do it while it was, my engine's out of the car because it's a lot easier to access. Make sure you get the correct size flathead. I tried using this one, and as you can see, it almost started stripping it. So, yeah, just make sure you get one that fits very snug in there and there's no play, or you'll start to start to strip it. I just got this right here. It's like a punch. That's the size right there. And it worked very well to get it out with a ratchet. I just have a 10 mil on it. Look at this O-ring, it just breaks. It's like plastic at this point. I got a Hack Engineering Viton O-ring. These ones are supposed to last the lifetime of the car, uh, not leak ever again really. So 
Let's put that to the test, I guess, right? They give you two, so if it ever does leak again, you could just put the other one in. Guys, oil pump is off. I have two torqued down, two spec, all good. I had to do three different procedures. Uh, it goes five Newton meters, 30 Newton meters, and then 105 degrees. So I had to use this little torque degree wrench thing adapter I got off, I got from AutoZone for $12. And it worked kind of good. So yeah, I got two down. Unfortunately, I can't use my tripod to record because yeah, holding the timing chain, um, not letting it have any slack so it doesn't fall out of timing. And I don't have anyone else over here to record. I'm doing this all by myself, but five Newton meters, 30 Newton meters, 105 degrees, and then back it off on both of them. Do the same thing three times. And on the third time, it's good. This is for the earlier model E46s. So, the 2003, not the 2003.5. So like there's like a little gap in between the 2003s and mine ended up being a little bit earlier every year of a 2003. So it has this, these M10 bolts that need that stretch on like the other new updated ones, which kind of sucks, but it's not too big of a deal. So yeah, I got these two done, doing these two now. Had to pull off the oil pump to get to this one. And then cylinder, Five and two are gonna be the last ones and should be pretty good. Really don't like this angle torque sequence thing because it's not exact. I'd much rather it just be a normal torque setting instead of being uh, to angle, but. Assembly lube on there. Um, I'm not gonna rub it in because I don't wanna get anything from my hands onto the bearing uh, and contaminating the crank as I touch it. Um, but once you push it up, it'll all seep in to where it's dry. And also, I'm gonna rotate this crank quite a bit of times before I even turn on the vehicle, so. And when you're pulling up the piston, you gotta be really, really careful not to nick the crank. So like, I just have both hands and very slowly pull it up into place. And there's a lot of pressure from the rings, so you just gotta be careful not to nick that because that would not be good. And you have to get a resurface or whatever. But, Yep, gonna put that on and then torque these two down and then torque those two down and it's ready to be put back together pretty much. Gotta put RTV right here, right here. So basically the front main seal and the rear main seal. Um, just like in those little cracks, I just put like a dab of it and then put the oil pan gasket over it and it shouldn't leak. All right, so decided to put the oil pump back on to show you guys exactly this sequence. So I actually did the first torquing sequence. So it just tells you to back off the bolts after that. So we're gonna back it off right now. And back this one off. Make sure this one's loose, okay. And now what I like to do is just finger kind of tighten them, make sure they're tight. I have two torque wrenches. So this one is in foot pounds. I don't have a Newton meter one for this one. So it's, it's equivalent, 22 foot pounds is equivalent to 30 Newton meters. So that's what I have this set to. And then this is set to five Newton meters. So, we're going to put these to five newton meters to start off. So, you can see it clicked. Not much, five newton meters, literally just pretty much hand tight. I had to get this adapter, it goes from half inch to three eighths. I also had to get an adapter for that other small torque wrench that goes from quarter inch to three eighths drive. So this is set to 22 foot pounds. Yep, just double checking. So we're gonna go over. 
Okay, it clicked. Same with this one. Okay, and then the last part of the torquing sequence, which is something I don't like, but it is what it is. Using this really crappy angle torque gauge, you can see, have it set to zero. And then pretty much, you wanna hold this down while you're tightening it, which is really annoying. And that's gonna go over to 105 degree. Okay, so I like to just hold it down, make sure it's on there so you don't strip the bolt. And... Okay, 105 degrees. Don't mind the lawn care workers. So now we're gonna do this one. All right, guys, rod bearings are officially installed, all torqued down to the way they need to be. Yeah, it's all in. It was a bit scary to do this for sure for the first time, but now doing it again, it wouldn't be very uh, nerve wracking, so. Yep, now it's time to put this oil pan back on. I cleaned up all the surfaces and I'm gonna put the gasket on there. All righty did new rear main seal so that's good did the valve cover gasket it was leaking a little bit in some areas so got a new valve cover gasket put a new gasket in the oil filter housing uh, behind there sometimes it'll start to leak right there so you can see i got the new water pump metal propeller instead of the plastic ones that comes with normally for oem uh, basically it's an oem one but with an upgraded metal propeller from Bimmer World. And yeah, it's coming together very nicely. Not too many hiccups, so that's good. And yeah, I mean, after I torque that rear main seal down, I'm gonna torque the nut for the oil pump gear and put the little, uh, drawing a blank, uh, pickup tube back in and then put the new oil pan gasket in and secure the oil pan in and then just start piecing this engine together and well just plugged in the battery and got pretty much the front end on still got to put the, the bumper and plug up some wires and whatever but She's got six liters of oil in it. Um, just a little extra, just in case, but I'm definitely gonna have to put more in it because pretty much the whole engine was drained of oil. So I'm gonna have to top that off, but I guess I'm very, very nervous, but I guess it's time to start cranking it just to get it primed and some oil pressure in the car. Um, I disconnected the fuel pump fuse let's see oh god this is scary okay let's see how my clutch feels it feels nice okay wow She is cranking very nicely. Okay, I guess it's time to plug in the fuel pump and hopefully it turns on very nicely, but that sounded very healthy. 
by the way that was cranking so at least nothing's on fire so far don't smell anything there's no leaks so far that I've seen don't have a bunch of coolant in it yet so I'm probably gonna have to go grab some real quick I'm just gonna use distilled water and some water wetter all right so definitely gonna go get distilled water uh, very very nervous but I don't know it cranked fine so it should be good to go crossing my fingers uh, I'm off of two hours of sleep right now but this is very very exciting I'm gonna put the exhaust back on now that it cranked very nicely nothing seemed out of the ordinary with wiring and then just gonna get to starting this thing up Apologize for not recording much. I'm just on a college schedule right now, so recording isn't a very, I don't have a lot of time for it. So uh, hopefully after I get this thing ready, uh, definitely I'll have some extra videos of like, you know, just street drifts and whatever. Uh, let me know what you guys wanna see. And yeah, I guess it's time. It's time to start this thing up after three weeks of it just sitting in this garage. Thank you to my dad for letting me use his garage for all this crap. But yeah, I guess it's it's almost time to start this thing up. Alrighty, Mona Truth right here. If it starts. Okay. Let's see how the fuel pump prime first. Make sure there's no fucking leaks. Second try, obviously, I'm stupid. Didn't plug in this into the ECU, so that's probably why the pump wasn't priming. Um, I don't know, let's see if it primes now. That's a stupid mistake. Still not priming. All right, let's see if this thing starts. I'm hearing it prime, so that is a good sign that I'm getting fuel. Let's see how this thing goes. Oh, there it is, that was good. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I made this video pretty much to show that anyone can work on this thing really. I did this all in my garage, didn't have a lot of fancy tools and it's running really strong. The only issue is the input shaft is leaking now, still, so got to pull the trans again, but I mean other than that, I it seems I did a decent job because it's not rod knocking I've driven it about a thousand miles or so and it's still good it's looking pretty snazzy back here so yeah thanks for watching guys stay tuned I'll definitely have some more videos on this thing and the E36 plan on going to some drift events maybe doing some street street drifts and if I left anything out in this video 
Uh, just leave down any questions in the comments. I know I wasn't very descriptive on some stuff, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I uh, should be making some more videos. Also, follow Hoon Garage on Instagram if you want to just get some daily updates and also uh, see some street drifting or whatever, any shenanigans I have. Thanks, guys.